A veteran surf lifesaver is pleading with local beachgoers to get involved in a bid to cut the drowning toll in Australia. There have been 10 ocean drownings since the summer season officially began, the youngest being 11 years old. And it's prompted Surf Live Saving Australia to issue an alert for beachgoers to think seriously about water safety. Related, teenage boy drowns at popular Adelaide Beach. Related, woman who drowned at Coffs Harbour was home for Christmas. But Greg Hackfarth, a lifesaver for over 25 years, said locals needed to keep an eye out for visitors and warn them if they are heading into dangerous waters. He believed there were a lot of other things we could be doing to help cut down on the amount of ocean drownings but harnessing local knowledge would definitely help reduce the toll. Mr Hackfarth said posted warning notices and education programs have their place but they really aren't the solution. Signs don't really work as people just go past them and don't read them. And, he said I've never seen a sign run down the beach and save someone. In the past week, two teenage boys have drowned at Gleal Beach in Adelaide, one, a 15-year-old visiting Indian student, and the other a member of the Burundi community. And only yesterday, another 15-year-old was rescued from the surf at Crescent Head, New South Wales and taken to hospital. Mr Hackfarth questioned the effectiveness of education campaigns saying if they worked, we probably wouldn't have any road deaths either. But he did not totally negate the program saying his council worked with local migrant communities and schools, and it's been very effective. The key he said is actually getting people into the water so they know what a rip feels like. Rips aren't dangerous, it's how people react to them that causes the problem especially if they aren't a strong swimmer. He said it would be good if everyone took a bodyboard or some kind of flotation device with a wrist strap to the beach. With only 4% of Australian beaches under the watchful eye of surf lifesavers at any one time, Mr Hackfarth says it's a difficult situation, particularly in the regional areas and smaller communities. And even at the beaches which have patrols, they usually finish up around 5 o'clock in the afternoon while conditions are still ideal for swimming and surfing. If they used some of the millions they spent on shark control on hiring more lifesavers, then there would be longer hours and protection on more beaches. In the Coffs Harbour area in New South Wales, where he works as a lifesaver, he said only 7 of the 32 beaches in that area have surf patrols. That's why he'd like to see locals getting involved as they usually walk the beach or are in the surf every day and know the hot spots. When you see someone going into the water in a place that could have issues, Go and talk them, have a yarn with them. Tell them they probably shouldn't go in there today and suggest another spot such as between the flags. Mr Hackfarth said it won't stop all drownings but it might stop some. He also knows some beachgoers might not take kindly to the advice but adds most people, if approached in a reasonable way, would appreciate the guidance.